No, just you stop it. Stop talking. Are we up there? Are we faded up there? No, you're still down a little bit there. Hello. Try it now. Ooh, Hello. Oh, that's Ooh. nice. That's good, man. Say something. Go on, say something to me. I love chocolate. Oh, chocolate. I want to eat chocolate all over my mouth. Ooh. I want to put it in my mouth and chew it and swallow stop it. it. Stop it there. Sit in my tummy. Yeah. You could do adverts. I could, couldn't I? Yeah. Hey, listen, listeners, good morning. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. Uh, hope you've had a good night's sleep. Adam and I, of course, have been out all night clubbing. Yeah, we've been partying. I was at the scrunch box um, in Mayfair with Tara Farah Tompkinson. I was at the Nunty Rooms. Really? In Depresta. I was raving on, on a, uh, a pill. I was so drugs. I wasn't... When I say a pill, I mean like an aspirin. Right. Mm. I was all over the drugs. Were you? No. And uh, it was sweaty and sexy, and uh, I was dancing with a girl. Yeah. Uh, but and she was sexy, and she wasn't wearing much. And I, But I looked closer, and, and she had stitched into the nape of her back, you know, the bottom of her back, a mm -hmm. little label saying chlamydia. Chlamydia, that's nice. Mm. Like in one of those adverts. Uh-huh. So I thought... Uh, oh, no, I'll, I'll, I won't bother. Which adverts are you, are you talking about? The, uh, the ones about chlamydia. Then I, then I was dancing with another girl, and uh, she was really, oh. really sexy. And uh, but then I saw she was wearing a necklace uh, saying chlamydia. Oh dear, yeah, so it's, isn't it? it's a shame. Puts you off, doesn't it? It does put you off, but but it's I'm happy it's so clearly signposted these days. You know what? It doesn't put me off, doesn't it? No, I like it. You love it, yes, because I think a it's a pretty name. And <laughs> for a girl, <laughs> it for is. A girl. And uh, B, it suggests to me that maybe they're promiscuous, in which case mm. I'm in there. You are in there. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. Good, good. Hey, listeners, thank you very much for joining us. We hope you're going to stick with us for as long as you can until midday, which is how long we're here until. We've got good music for you and entertaining chit-chat. Um, and let's continue in that vein right now. This is a good link, isn't it, man? I'm impressed. The way I'm talking, stringing all these words together? Yeah. It's pretty impressive stuff, isn't it? So now, I don't know anything about this band. Who are they? Pink Squares? No, no, no. I was a Cub Scout. I always get that wrong. I was a Cub Scout. We've played this before, haven't we? Yeah. And it's good, I seem to recall, in my brainium. So this is I Was a Cub Scout with Pink Squares. That was I Was a Cub Scout with Pink Squares. And I Was a Cub Scout are going to be playing at the Six Music Showcase at the South by Southwest Festival in Austin, Texas, right? In 2008. That's this year! I've been to Austin. Have you? Yeah, it's really nice. It's a happening town, yeah, man. Yeah, it's lovely. I, I went to the uh, Alamo Draft House. Right. You know where big old Harry Knowles, king of internet movie nerds, lives? Does he? It's a cinema where you uh, sit at kind of benches as if you're studying for an exam and you can eat food. Does he do while you watch cool films? news? He does do it. Right, right. Yeah. And when did you go there to Austin, Texas? I went there last year to Austin, Texas. What were you doing there? I was doing there. What? No, I was uh, I was with the Hot Fuzz guys. Oh. Uh, yeah, promoting Hot Fuzz. They had a screening there. Uh, yeah. What's Hot Fuzz? Uh, hot Fuzz is a kind of sensation you get when you rub yourself on the carpet. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, I want to go to Austin, Texas. It's cool. Why can't we go there and do something for Let's six music? Let's do a live show from there. Can't we? Our, sh our show would be massively improved I by sending us to... on holiday. I haven't been to America for about ten years or Really? So. Yeah, not since, well, yeah, uh, since 2001, man. The last time I was it's there was, changed. was uh, the day after 9-11. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And apparently it's changed. It, it's changed enormously. Joe Cornish, I heard, saying that it's really changed. Yeah, I heard him say that as well. Yeah. He's always right. He's always right. The whole studio, listeners, I'm sorry to tell you, smells a little bit revolting this morning because someone left the milk in the fridge too long or something. It's gone off. and But I don't understand how just milk in a fridge can stink up the entire place to quite such a degree when i came in this morning it was like the aftermath of a r particularly bad house party do you know what i mean hmm. uh that's the worst smell in the world isn't it Off it's like an airborne virus stroke vomit do you think it's uh do you think it's actually contagious yes that i'll smell of off milk for the rest of the day yes that's terrible whoever it's like living in a kind of student digs this place isn't it all the people lounging around listening to alternative music, letting their milk go off. It's a total nightmare. It's a rock station. That's the kind of uh, behaviour that's to be expected. Now, we've got some music here that was chosen by you, Joe. Yeah, I chose this one. Uh, this is by the Fine Young Cannibals. They're a band from the 80s. 
uh if you're if you're you know young you might not remember them but they were really good they had a lead singer called roland gift yeah is that right god's gift he was a very handsome man very handsome what's and, he doing uh, now i don't know probably just being very happy exactly out, out of the public eye um but he's kind of uh, either that or producing music that no one pays attention to or maybe they do and we don't know because he's the man yeah. behind the scenes he's yeah. got like a moniker now exactly he's an amazingly famous the producer giftmeister who knows but this is one of their best tracks i think this is the fine young cannibals with i'm not the man i used to be yeah hip hop's come on uh, quite a way since then uh has it yeah it's, not de it's really. developed it, well, that's kind of you like proceeded to eat it cuz it was deaf I like that. That's kind of like stuff. Duplo hip hop, isn't no, it? No, it's good enough, man. You don't need anything more than that. I Who was do. in Run DMC? That's Jam Master J. Was he in there? He probably. J Master Jam Jar. Probably. What? I never really. I don't know. Yeah. The Jam Jar. He, the Jam Jar. He was one of the early uh, champions of Fifty Cent, wasn't he? I was he? I believe he was. Yeah. I think. Uh, Eventually, Eminem and Dr. Dre got hold of 50 Cent and propelled him to superstardom. Right. But uh, Jam Master J, or whatever his name was, from Run DMC, was one of the first people that encouraged that so? young Curtis. Well, there's a, there's a real 50 Cent, isn't there? He's a, a real robber man. Yeah, and 50 Cent, he doesn't get much uh, respect if you kind of push people about him because uh, people reckon he kind of stole the, the kind of uh, life of the genuine 50 Cent. Right. And actually, he's quite uh, well brought up nice fellow curtis yeah curtis not really though i mean he's what a, i've been told he had a rough life comparatively speaking oh really you I think he uh, comparatively but apparently he exaggerates it a bit man i saw uh mtv cribs last night Ooh. and they were looking around 50 cents house i like to call him 50 pence mm. and uh 50 pence has an amazing house it's extraordinary and i think it must have been filmed fairly recently because he was talking about his last was his last album called curtis i don't know that came out last year i think it was so it must have been filmed late last year early this year uh, no it couldn't have been early this year could it but anyway he lives in farmington connecticut in a 18 Look, can we get the specific date of the filming yeah. <laughs> right before we move on well i'm trying to establish how recent it was you know right. what i mean and i think it was fairly recent 18 and a half million dollar mansion he's got there it used to belong to mike tyson and uh, although at the end he reveals that he's recently got himself another place in Long Island, oh my lord, so he can be closer to his son. Anyway, this place he's got there in in Farmington, Connecticut, it's amazing. It's got he's got a helicopter, Joe. Wow, it's got a red helicopter. No, Lebens has got one of those. It's not that amazing. Yeah, but you expect Noel to have one. You know, Noel's been at the coal face for years and years and years. But uh, Fitty, he's only been a player for maybe five years or something okay I'll, I'll give you that and it's an extraordinary uh, accumulation of, uh, of wealth and splendor that he's got there in farmington he's got uh, several cars joe several cars. several more than one like one he's got presumably for going to the shops one he's got for the school run but he's got several others that i can't even think of uses for and wow. they're different colors one of them cost a million dollars wow which is too much for a car don't you reckon it's a waste of money it's a waste i mean of a car money. is a practical thing exactly it'll only get scratched exactly <laughs> someone's key it that's right well if they did i would imagine there would be robot mm. security guards in farmington connecticut that would that would kill you but he's got basketball courts and tennis courts there he's got a pool room with louis vuitton upholstered walls joe wow and on the pool table itself instead of green bays he's got louis vuitton bays oh class and that's class it's the best way to play pool it's the only way that you would want to play pool he's got a club in this house joe a nightclub and he's got all the facilities you need for topless lady dancing. Does the nightclub have people in it? No. It's just empty. It's totally empty. Is that any use? Well... I'd have robot people. You reckon? Yeah. Like replicants? <laughs> yeah. Not Sexy like replicants, replicants. Just, just, you know, robotic. Right. So I could dance. Yeah, that's a good idea. With them. Man, maybe he's got them in a, in a robot cupboard mm, there. Probably hydraulic. Who can, who can tell? Probably under the floor. He's got giant revolving plasma TVs everywhere. In his, in his room at the end of his bed, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And if he maybe wants to shift position, he's got a little control. <laughs> the TV revolves around depending on where he is in the room. Mm. He's got one in the shower, opposite the shower. In case you want to watch TV in the shower, mm. he says. Uh, you know, quite logical. And then, ah, uh, what else has he got there? And then one of the nice things about his house is that he's got rooms for all his friends in G-Unit. 
So you go down. There's a special little wing for Tony Yayo, and there's one for Young Buck, and there's a little wing for Law- Lloyd Banks as well. He's got his little room there at the end. Obviously, Fitty's room is much more splendiferous than theirs. And he's got like a staircase in his room, and they, they, as far as I can tell, they didn't have revolving tellies. But they were still pretty nice. But the whole place was a little bit like a kind of、uh, a hotel from a theme park. Well, you know, sometimes in those things they just film them in a hotel. You reckon? In a theme park, I think so. Yeah. No, because G Unit and Fitty's name was painted everywhere, and there were big yeah, murals. Yeah, they, they do that. <laughs> they do. They do. They do do that. No, they don't. It's like a hello、uh, photo shoot, you know, where you、right. just get a get a suite、yeah. or hire a house to make it look like it's yours. They do do that sometimes. I know. I know. But Fifty they... Cent lives in a little house in Da Hood. <laughs> He keeps it real. A little crack shack. Well, I was thinking. If if it is his place, and I have every reason to believe that it really was, at the end he was saying,、uh, "Next time MTV Cribs, I'll show you around my new house." Is he talking like that? No, he was saying he's talking, he's talking like this. He's saying because you know he got shot in the face and stuff. Sure, he did. So he's like his mouth's a little bit mangy. It's like a big <laughs> pepper pot. <laughs> he is. And he's saying next time MTV Cribs, you can come around、in、my fact, house. Well, that would just be a good novelty pepper pot. Yeah, fifty <laughs> cent with some holes, with some bullet holes. <laughs> And、uh, maybe it, salt, not pepper, because you'd need to to grind it. You could have a Linda Blair pepper pot. You that's know, nice. Ro- rotate the head. Absolutely. It could dispense guacamole as well. Sorry, keep. There's、talking. all kinds of tasteless pepper pots you could have. So yeah, we're promised a tour of his house in Long Island, and I was、uh, thinking about like what. Could he possibly have that? Do you know what I mean? I mean, we should listen to some music. But I've got some、yeah. ideas for what Fitty could have his, in his new house that I'd like to tell you, listeners.、Uh, but for now, listeners, we've got hives. There you go. That's the hives. They were just making that up as they went along, as far as I can tell. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. It is ten thirty, and it's time for the news read by. No, it's not ten thirty. It's nine thirty. Excuse me. Time for the news read by Chris Wincrest. Stop shouting! How many times have I told you about shouting, Perry Farrell? With your Jane's addiction, you make me sick. That was Jane's addiction, and、uh, with just because. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Morning, this is very, very nice morning. Would you call it? It's like the cusp of spring, isn't it? Don't you think? A little bit of spring in the air. It's certainly about to be spring. I really、yeah. hope so because I'm fed up of winter. You always forget that winter doesn't really stop. I always assume that winter stops around about you know New Year. But don't do it. That's、no. more or less the beginning of winter. You get the whole of January. It's a nightmare. Have we had any texts in about、uh, Fitty's house? I think someone texted in. I was speculating before about what Fitty would have in his new house. Fitty sent. I'm talking about、um, because the place that he's got already that was on MTV Cribs last night was just amazing. And I was thinking, how much better could it get? You know what I mean? What would you have in your fantasy house? Have you ever thought about that, Joe? Um, not really, but I, I, I will now. I'll、Man. have a think about it now. I was thinking that Fitty, like with all this money, because he's like number two most richest rapper, right, behind Jay Z. I, I don't、think. know. I think he is. I think Forbes has rated him as because he's got loads of、uh, going concerns apart from all the rapping he does. Right, he's got all his special drinks、uh, for building muscle building. He's got his range of condoms. I think he's got all like fingers in all kinds of pies. Uh, which is not a nice expression to use after mentioning condoms, but still, you know what I'm talking about, <laughs>、hmm. listeners.、Uh, so I was thinking, like, in Fitty's new house, right? He, seeing as he can have anything, I was thinking a good thing to have would be a house inside the house, <clears throat> like a little semi-detached house in the living room, and a family would live there. Do you know what I mean? Like real, a real family, but they would be big fans of Fitty. And they'd play his music all the time, and they'd be delighted to live there. So it would be a nice two-way deal, you know. It would be nice for Fifty to、uh, enjoy their ad- adoration, and and of course it would be fun for the family to live in the living room of their hero. So that's a nice idea. Also, you could have obviously this is an obvious one: rooms with money wallpaper. That would be great, wouldn't it? So actually, paper the wall the the walls with money with real money,、mm. and then the furniture would be made out of big blocks of money. It's a bit tacky. Well, I didn't think that would be a problem. No, probably, it probably isn't. I thought he would like it. Do you know、he、what I mean?、Might. Because it's not only is it, it you could make him, you can make him comfortable, you know. But there would be solid money. It wouldn't be like a wooden framework with、mm. money pl- 
pasted on top. That would be cheating. It would be solid money. He would his bed sheets would be made from the Turin shroud. I was thinking, oh, because that's a little tasteless, and possibly offensive to it's a lot of people. It's not very big. No, but maybe not the well. You know, he's got there air are, conditioning. Uh, you know what? There are several shrouds. He'd stitch them I together. Think. He'd stitch them together. It'd be a sort of patchwork quilt. Uh, he. What about the Bayo tapestry? How about that? With the Turin shroud, like yeah, holy relics. A little relics. bit of the of the Turin shroud. Exactly. Uh, he could have, um, yeah, any kind of holy relic all stitched together. And it wouldn't just be the shroud itself. It would be part of a duvet. He'd need a, a, a very, very gentle powder to wash that with. <laughs> exactly. Do it at 30. It's just, good for the environment you, and for the relic. You wouldn't want to, maybe just 20, I would say. I wouldn't mm. go as high mm. as 30 for the Turin Shroud. Um, and he would, in his house also, he'd have a lot of gold things, because that's what rich people mm. like. Gold water? He would have golden water. Mm, delicious mm, golden water. Sounds a bit disgusting. Well, only little bits of gold. Do you remember we had, we had that drink before one time? Sure. Someone sent yep. us some booze with yep. gold in it. Gold is not bad for you if taken in small doses. He would have gold-plated fruit. Mmm. Delicious. He'd also have a machine that when you go to the loo, right, mm. and for number twos, it would gold-plate your pops as they fell out into the bowl. Why? Wouldn't that be great? What do you mean, why? So you could keep them. And uh, you could store them. Maybe you'd keep them, maybe you'd just flush them down, because that's, you don't care. So what? Gold pops? I don't care. Flush them. But it would just be nice to think. Nice treat for the sewage workers. Well, exactly. With little fishing nets. Exactly. They could unwrap them. Anyway, I was listening, I was thinking... Wait, you know, they wouldn't unwrap them. They'd just, uh, they'd just take the gold. That's what I'm saying. You'd, you know, you don't... Oh, I see. I, I thought you meant they were discarding the gold. That would be insane. In order to get to the... Why would you do that? Well, because they're big fans of 50 Cent. Exactly. You could put it on eBay. So it's too, it works both ways now that you mention it like that. Anyway, I was thinking if anyone had any other ideas for what Fitty could have in his house, or indeed what you would have in your house, listeners, if like your favorite house, if you had all the money in the world uh, out of your many houses, what kind of things would you have in there? I'd be interested to know. Uh, now, are we going to play Pete and the Pirates now? This is another band that apparently played at South by Southwest in Austin, Texas last year for Six Music. And um, this track is called Mr. Understanding. So let's recap. Do, 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 do. That's Pete and the Pirates with Mr. Understanding. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. Um, I was I was bad this this week, Adam. Oh, what did you do? I went to see. This isn't the bad thing. I went to see No Country for Old Men, the <laughs> the Coen Brothers film. Yeah, did you enjoy it? Uh, I did enjoy it, but it was being ruined for me by four people. The actors? No, no. In, I saw it, it. It's a very quiet film. That's right. It's got an amazing soundtrack in it. Very little um, uh, music. It's true. It's not good for eating. I had my bag no. of revels and I didn't get finished. I think, listeners, this might be a common problem in this particular film. Yeah. That it really sort of highlights the annoyingness of, of munching and cinema behaviour, which winds me up anyway. It's true. Uh, but but it's, it's, it's such a sort of studied film. Beautiful vistas, amazing natural sounds. Uh, and one of those films where because there's no sound you get really absorbed in it you're paying much more attention and some young people some thick young people from the suburbs mm. i don't want to insult people from the suburbs unless they're these particular people right. i'm thinking of i do want to insult them uh they're used to films with loud noises monsters squashing people people screaming people, uh you know pop hits every four minutes people teleporting everywhere yeah the, the <laughs> tiniest sounds yeah. sounding like a nuclear explosion right uh so they're used to just being able to chit chit chittle trottle all the time with no consequence you know and no consideration of anybody else um, and that's what they, these people started doing. Oh. I was... 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 I was the noise. Oh. Constantly in my how, left ear. How far into the film are we at this point? The very beginning. No. Yeah, like the first ten minutes. Big thing of popcorn. So your heart is like sinking. That. I'm at just this going. Point. I'm really. I really want to enjoy this film. I've saved it up. I waited until the cinemas were a bit empty. Until because everyone was seeing that for the first couple of weeks, it was full of, uh, you know, nobos <laughs> who'd had dinner parties and chitty right. chatting, and so I, I waited till it was empty. Was it an option to move to a different uh, part of the cinema? No, because it's it was a, not a very big cinema, and it's right. a widescreen presentation. Yeah, two point three five to to one or whatever it is. You've got to sit near the back. My favorite aspect ratio. I, I love that aspect ratio. Uh, and then in, uh, there were those people, 
making a terrible racket. And then in front of them, uh, there was a woman who I think was doing origami no. uh, with some kind of rice paper. <laughs> Either that or she was uh, she she had one of those work from home jobs where you insert boxes into other boxes right. and then rattle things. She was making extraordinary noises. Probably that greaseproof paper on a sandwich, maybe, or something. Something like that. But yeah. it was really annoying me. And I think everyone else in the cinema. Uh, so you know what I did? Well, it's got to be turned around and do a bit of shushing. I, tr I tried A. I tried tactic number one, staring. Right. And I'm sure other people have done this. What you do is you just do a <laughs> really, really s strong lean forward. Yeah. Rotate your whole head so that your face catches the light and just glare. Hmm. in a paddington bear <laughs> style and hope that you know they catch you out of your perif out of their peripheral vision what if they're scary uh, would you do that if you were scary uh, the staff will back me up because the I... little ladies <laughs> i'm amazed that you would go for a face-off before you I go was for so, a shush. i was really annoyed wow i was really annoyed this didn't work <laughs> it didn't work at all so i stood up Right. And I went over to them. Oh, my goodness. And I leant right into them. And and you know that thing where you kind of build up a visual uh, image of them in your brain in the half-light of what they're <laughs> like? I thought he was like a, a big, beefy, idiot man with a tattoo on his head, and she was an awful slapper, and they were stupid. <laughs> when I leant into them, they, they looked, the first thing I noticed was they were quite nice. Right. They seemed like quite a nice lovey-dovey couple having a nice evening at the cinema. Um, the next thing that happened was I tried to say to them, excuse me, can you please keep your voice down? You're spoiling the film. Soon as I talked, <laughs> something loud happened in the film. <laughs> so I just went, <laughs> and they looked at me really confused. Why is this man violating our personal space? Why is he talking at us? Uh, and so I just went, yeah. like that international language of mine. Of course, the lifted shush. the finger, Should've told them it. to shut. I'd done it. First. They just looked really freaked out. Right. They looked really frightened and terrified. Yeah, but did you get any results? Oh yes. Oh yeah. It worked. Good they were one. so scared <laughs> by this weird man <laughs> leaning his stupid long face right into their Saturday night. Yeah. They didn't make another noise, and I really enjoyed the film. Good job. I don't know whether anyone else has any more effective tactics for, for shutting people up. But when you sat down, did you feel a little traumatized by the encounter? Did that ruin a few minutes of the film for you? I did think that something might go down on the way out. Right. What I did tried you do? to put it to the back of my mind, but as the, as, the, as the film was coming to an end, I did start thinking, hmm. <laughs> Shall I go how, I, how am I going to exit? <laughs> but no, it was fine. I think they were so frightened. Good job. Yeah. Warning, listeners, do not try this technique in <laughs> any uh, of the rougher cinemas in London's outer regions, mm. or you'll get a knife in the Julies, mm. possibly, mm. depending on the... Um, it's a good chain. film, though. It's great, isn't it? It's pretty good. It wouldn't be as good as it uh, is without that weapon. Uh, yeah, the weapon's amazing. Iconic. Do you remember me talking about it before? Yeah. I mean, he's the in... weapon's the, pretty much the, the weapon and the hair. Yeah, yeah, exactly. pretty much most of the deal. Genius. It's like a horror film. It's, it's like Halloween. I didn't yeah. realise. No, he's a super villain. He's like up there with the you're aliens. A, you are a super villain. You well done. Amongst all the villains, you're the best. You're super well done for killing all those people, especially the one in the shower where you just closed the curtain and the blood went splat. I loved it. <laughs> it's always you're nice. You're super. It's always nice. Now, here's a, a choice for you listeners that I've picked for you. This is the first first of three epic tracks I've chosen for you uh, for the show this week. I hope you enjoy them. So they're a, they're a little longer than normal, but it's my contention that these epic tracks do not outstay their welcome. This is one from Supergrass's uh, eponymous album, Supergrass. Maybe not one of their best albums. Kind of the one, was this their third or fourth, maybe? Anyway, it's got a few good tracks on it, and this is really one of Supergrass's best out of any of their albums, for my money. It's called Far Away. Wow, that, w that was a session track, listeners, from the John Peel Sessions 1979, Thin Lizzy, with uh, one of their songs. What's it got? It's gone. Dancing in the Moonlight. Dancing, Dancing in, in the, the moonlight. moonlight. This is uh, Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. Is this the greatest radio show in the world? What? Yeah. Yeah. You know, there was in the Guardian newspaper yesterday, it said at the top in big letters, is this the greatest day for new films ever? <laughs> right. I like it when newspapers structure a, uh, you know, a story like that. Yeah. Because you can say anything, stick a question mark at the end, and it validates the most preposterous sentences. Is Joe Cornish the sexiest, cleverest man currently alive? Yeah, to which, of course, the answer would be... Would, would, would be no. 
What? You know, I'm near the top. I'm in the top five. Oh, okay. But it would be, you know, um, arrogant to say I was number one. A little bit arrogant. But still, I've said the words. Yeah, exactly. I've said the sentence. You've, put, you've posed the question. Yeah, it's like that brilliant scene in a not particularly brilliant film, How to Get Ahead in Advertising, uh -huh. where he points out the use of the word may in, in newspapers as well. Right. You know, they, they rely on that word very heavily to justify amazing statements. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah. We don't even bother with that. When we talk about text the nation, we don't equivocate. We tell people it's the nation's favorite feature. Yeah. Is text the nation the greatest feature in the world? <laughs> is it? Yes. Is it? Yes, no. Yes, it you is. No. Yes, no. <laughs> We're going to be Maybe. launching text the nation very shortly, listeners. Even though, uh, have we decided exactly what it's going to be? No, the thing is we've got too many uh, subjects today. So we've got various things you can text in on. We've got uh, 50 Cent's House. Yeah. Ways for dealing uh, with noisy people in cinemas. Mm. But one of these subjects will be kind of unfairly flagged with the Text the Nation jingle. Yeah, exactly. Nice bit of unfair flagging. Hey, have you got... Um you know, uh, for online banking, do you do online banking? You're talking to me or the listeners? You, Joe Cornish. Uh, no. You don't do any online No, I banking. don't trust it. Oh. Well, you see, what they give you, though, if you're doing a little bit of online banking, is you get, like, a little security keypad they send you through. Uh, this is with Barclays, at least. I mm. don't know about other banks. But you get a thing that looks like a little mini calculator with a slot for mm. your credit card at the top or your debit card. And each time you log on to check out your online banking details, you have to pop the, the credit card in there and it asks you to... That wasn't sent to you by Barclays. No. That was sent to you by Lambic <laughs> Shibot. <laughs> <laughs> Whose dad died in a Nigerian gold mining accident. Mm. And he's raising funds. He's taking all your money. Probably. Spending it on potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Why does he want potatoes? Because he's a, a Latvanian potato farmer. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I was just wondering if other people had this, or whether it was indeed a, a scam from, what was his name? Lambert Potato. I don't know, I can't remember. <laughs> Lambert. That was his name. Um, you know, because it's it seems complicated, but obviously you have to go through these procedures to keep it all secure and everything. You know, you put your card in there, it asks you to ver put, first of all, you have to put your PIN in, then it generates a kind of random number you that you have to... You put your PIN in? Your PIN in. Your PIN in. Yeah. Mm. And uh, it generates a number, you have to key the number into mm. your uh, online details and everything. It takes ages. I was trying to think of, here's another thing that you could text in for <laughs> listeners, uh, is what extra security measures could you have right we're gonna overload the listeners mm. that's but that's three things now well they don't have to text in about any of this i'm just speculating don't confuse them doesn't matter they won't get confused what would you have what extra security stuff would uh, you have in 50 cents house <laughs> no what come on in what for banks yeah uh, I would have a, uh, an, imp uh, 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 I don't know, a photocopy of the arse. That's a good idea, you yeah, see. You That's... scan your arse. Yeah. No two are the same. Very nice. You could, they could even send out special chairs that have the scanner. Special chairs. In, as part yeah. of the seat of the chair. The security chair. Yeah. I would just s down download a, w a woman. Mm hmm You know, like Kelly Brock. I thought you were going to say Wookie. In, uh, download a Wookie. Download a Wookie. Yeah, little Wookies. Like Kelly Brock. Uh, like Gremlins. They're sent to you in little baskets. Yeah. I don't know, what use would they be? Uh, what, the Wookies? Yeah. What would they do? I don't know. You were the one who I, I thought of the idea. I was thinking you could just have, well, I was thinking you could just have a person. You know, you get an online banking thing and they send you a person. What about this? Yeah. In the high street, there's like a room, uh, with a counter and a woman or a man. Mm -hmm behind it how about that what and you, and you go there and yeah. you say hello they say hello and they help you and you smile and chat and it's nice and it's the same person every time mm -hmm. or one of a couple of people that you know yeah hey what about, what about that what's wrong with that yeah yeah here's the thing you could go in there and you could get a gun right and if you wanted loads of money you could just hold the place up get out of the bbc all right then. leave the bbc okay i will do uh, is it time for the top of our sweeper? I love the top of our sweeper. Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. It's the nation's favourite feature. Could it be the nation's favourite feature? Is that how I'm supposed to say it? Could this feature 
simply by listening to it yeah. make you stronger and live 98 years longer than normals Ooh. could this feature simply by interacting with it turn you into a muscle man mm. could this feature i can't do a third one no could, i'm having to stop right could could this feature make you more potent yes <laughs> well, that's a good reason for having it then isn't it yeah so uh this is adam and joe on bbc six music it's time for text the nation uh the time of the show when we give you a sort of a question type thing or a topic of uh conversation a topic a topic are you can <laughs> why, why have you suddenly got so excited about me saying the word topic are they your favorite chocky chocky yeah ones? they've got a hazelnut in every oh, bite there you know what my mum loves topics does she they're so small but they're powerful they're like a dum dum bullet are they smaller than the average bar uh they are smaller than the average bar no let's not get sidetracked on chocky bar sizes <laughs> though <laughs> i'd love a chocky bar topic. right now <laughs> topics are lovely they've got nougat and peanuts <laughs> and the two flavors really offset each other one another they've got more peanuts than any oh, other bar got the hazelnut in every bite topic smooth milk chocolate for your delight topic and don't forget the hazelnut in every bite topic snick <laughs> anyway so listen that's not the point though i got the lyrics wrong there's other bars obviously there are are there yeah cool topic no none other but none of this called topic here's the text the nation uh subject um and obviously there's a couple more subjects floating around but we'd like you for the moment to focus on this one and this one is uh games Games. Not mind games, but games you play, for instance, if you go and have uh, a meal with some friends, often after the meal, a friend will propose that you play a game. The time in your life I would say that you play most of these is, would you, would you reckon your 20s, before people start having children and stuff like very that? Very popular in your 20s, very popular for younger people, and we're not necessarily talking about sordid drinking games. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about ways for a group of people to have fun. We're not talking about board games. No. We're talking about uh, games that you've learned off other people or games that you've made up. This is like in the in the weird years, just after you've got bored of drinking yourself senseless and just mm. trawling around all, all night trying to snog. There's something to do while you do that. A little bit. Yeah. But it's when you start going around uh, to other people's houses, isn't it, and, and having a bit of sups, and then afterwards, instead of watching TV or whatever, you'll sit around and you'll someone will say, "Let's play the hat game." Now and this can be really boring. Yeah. Some people hate games like this. Mm -hmm. uh, they find them an, an anathema. Is Ooh. that a word? Yeah. Yeah. Other people like them, but whether you like them or hate them, we all find ourselves being caught up in them every now and then. Yeah, and you always look, it's always a bad idea to resist them too much because then it becomes a big deal. You just look it? like a sourpuss. Exactly. Everyone rounds on you. Yeah. Uh, the hat game is a game where everyone writes the name of a famous person mm -hmm. on a piece of, on lots of pieces of paper. You fold them up, put them in a hat. You have to pass it around, uh, pick it out. And what do you do? Do you, do you, do you mime that? No, you describe the person without saying their name. Yeah. This can be embarrassing because if uh, you don't know who they are sometimes. Uh, and then you can do it three times. You can do it once with, with, mi with using just one word. That's the three rounded hat game. And then the third time you just do it with a mime. Exactly. Other types of games are, are kind of less civilized than that. Like we invented a game when we were very stupid called Sumo. Sumo, you mentioned this well, before. I yeah. never remember. Well, I don't Sumo. think I played it with Adam, but some, some friends of mine, what we used to do is get quite uh, overexcited on various inebriants, wrap ourselves in duvets, go to this local park. Uh, someone would shout, Sumo is go! <laughs> This is pathetic, obviously. And then we'd run at each other in these big duvets wow. and try and push each other over. You see, it I was yeah. wicked. Was it wicked? Yeah. This must have been when I got a girlfriend. This is before kids killed each other for fun. <laughs> yeah. You know, when the world was innocent. That's right. So that's another good after dinner game. We, we used to like have something to eat and then go and play some sumo. Uh, but what we want to know from you listeners are really, really good games. The games that you've either made up and find really rewarding uh, or that you find, you know, satisfying and not annoying. And uh, it would also be interesting to know some of your least favourite games as well. Yeah, some Don't of you the reckon? ones that drive you mad. The ones that make your heart sink like uh, my wife gets very upset whenever the notion of the book game is uh, Well, the mooted. book game is a, is a posh game that people at universities play where you have to 
What is it? Well, you write the opening line. You, yeah, you grab a book at random out of a shelf. It's mm. a good game. You grab a book at random out of a shelf, and you have to say, "Okay, everyone, you've got to write down what you think the first sentence of this book is." That's right. You've got to guess what the first sentence is. You've got to try and ape the literary style. Yeah. And then somebody reads out all the made-up first lines and the real first line, and you have you to don't guess. know which is which. Exactly. You have to guess what the real one is. It's a good game. That is a great game because you have to kind of. I'm repeating myself. Ape. A literary style yeah and first lines of books are obviously crucial mm -hmm. you know they're often the most famous part of the book so to get to get something that sounds like it could genuinely be a good first line but is it's a intimate like a challenge got, we some people really hate I used it to win it all the time did you mm. you're so good at writing I'm so clever so clever because mm. you could have written most of those books yourself i could i just couldn't be, you bothered. Just be bothered i couldn't be bothered so folks we want to hear uh, your ideas for your favorite games and, and some of your worst games as well yeah the text number uh, what's the text number, Jude? Because my computer's just gone. Six four zero oh, four six. Six four what? Six four zero oh, four six. Six four zero oh, four six. That's it. And the email, if you want to write a slightly longer text, you know, you might want to detail some rules of the game because we, I'd like to try playing some of these. You Absolutely. know. Absolutely. I'd like to add them to my arsenal. Yeah. Is that private? Hmm. Um, you can email Adam and Joe dot six music at bbc dot co dot uk. Go on, give it a try. It won't hurt. It might be fun. I'm thinking about your arsenal. Um, now, look, Joe's picked out this next song for you listeners. Have I? Yeah, this is Woodcat, isn't it? Oh, yeah, this is by Tongue. Uh, this is, you know, folky fun. Here it is. Fun, folk fun. <laughs> Ian Jory and the Blockheads with What a Waste is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. Our producer, the lovely Jude Adam, very talented lady if you ever need any producing. She's expensive, but she's really good. Uh, she was saying that Phil Jupiter stands in for Ian Jury now in their live shows. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's right. Well, they did a, a sort of gala tour a while back where various guests stood in for uh, the late, great Ian Jury, including people like Robbie Williams and stuff. And uh, apparently the dupe was, was the best. He was the best. And Mark Lamar, I think, was one of them as well. Really? All sorts of people, yeah. A very strange. A very strange. So, uh, listen, y listeners and Adam, y you're fans of the Beatles. Who? The Beatles. Are they like the Arctic Monkeys? Yeah. But, I love um, them. But younger. Yeah, I like um, them. They've uh, given their music to a new film that's coming out on DVD, I think, on Monday. It's called Across the Universe. Have you oh, heard of this thing? Yes, I it's have. It's directed by a woman called Julie Taymor. She directed The Lion King. She's a very famous and brilliant theatre director. Um, and she's made this film which uses a lot of the Beatles music. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of a narrative uh, musical kind of thing. Um, but it's very controversial. Why? Some people say that it's it's wickedy sticks. Ooh. Other people say that it's a big old pile of old Stephen dog blocks. Yeah. It's really dividing people. Right. Some people reckon, you know, literally it's a life-changing, miraculous experience. Who reckons that? Uh, some guy on the internet. Drunkies. <laughs> Drunkies. No. So I watched some of it last night. Right. I had to go to bed early. I didn't make it through the whole thing. But um, I thought it was, you know, pretty good. Right. Uh, it's not e enormously successful. But let me give you a little illustration of the kind of mental problems you might have while watching this film. Uh, across the universe any famous people in the film not really no which is a g i don't mind that i prefer my films with with strangers because then know. i believe them i don't know man i love famous people you do well they're so clever and yeah sexy. they're good looking so what the film does it is it creates a story uh and then the story happens to hit sort of plot points that match with beatles songs plop points plop points yeah that match with beatles songs do you get the idea i do it's a bit like mamma mia or one of those west end musicals where they construct a story out of existing well there were songs. a lot of uh, narratives in beatles songs of course so at one point they bump into eleanor rigby that's right do they uh well i didn't get to that bit oh okay but the lead guy in this film is called jude hey yeah so there you go jude adam yeah uh so there's a scene where um he's taught he's met his dad his estranged father who he's never met before uh he's just suddenly turned up on this campus where his estranged dad works the kids from liverpool the dad is american the dad goes listen kid the kid goes it's jude you know and then the dad goes well jude so the problem is uh, lines of dialogue keep sounding like Beatles songs that never were. Uh-huh. Well, Jude. <laughs> um, you know, it's weird like that. When en whenever anybody says Jude in it, 
you think they're going to start singing a singing a song? The mum at one point says, "More stuffing, Jude." Would that be a good Beatles song? Uh huh. Would it? More stuffing, Jude. That would be one of Ringo's ones. And then they try and shoehorn the names of other songs into scenes. So there's a scene where this kid, before the dad bit, he's working at a mine. He collects his paycheck and、uh, is is leaving the mine. He's handing in his notice. The guy behind the desk says,、uh, "Oh, you're handing in your notice, are you?" I felt the same at your age. I told myself, when I'm sixty-four, I'll be long gone from this place. <laughs> and you're thinking that's not how it goes, isn't it? No, well, no, that's when I'll be long gone from this place is not a line. No, but when I'm sixty-four, yes, it is. That's the point. Exactly, is the bit that there that you're supposed to go、yes. <laughs> right and think, oh, that's clever. But then, do they? I don't understand. Do they? Do they break into song? How do the songs? They do break into get song. woven. Yeah, they just suddenly break into song. Oh. Pretty cleverly, right? It's cleverly done. It's one of those good combinations of, of you know,、uh, kind of heroic experimentation and a bit of success and a bit of failure. Yeah. But it's a weird technique because just random lines that I, I'm not very good at the Beatles. I, I don't know a lot of the names of the Beatles songs,、mm. so I kept thinking that lines of dialogue were maybe songs. Oh, I see. Like, is there a is there a song called "I've Ironed Your Best Shirt"? <laughs> <laughs>、uh, is no. Is that a Beatles song? Not that I'm aware of, unless it's a really obscure one. And then I started to think of how you could do this with, you know, with other song titles. Yeah. Like you could have a scene、uh, with a, not with Beatles songs, but you know, with general pop songs in general. You could have a scene where policemen are discussing a case.、Uh, a policeman says to the other policeman, "Yeah, she's five foot four, Caucasian, European, female." You know. Then they start singing the Stranglers. The Stranglers. Yeah. Is that a good idea? That's a very good idea. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could go to town, couldn't you? I mean, you've got the whole, all the narratives contained in the amazing universe of pop. Yeah, that's the backbone of many an episode of of a really very bad TV show. Surely, it's worth seeing if you're into music. And it's called what? It's called Across the Universe.、Right. I'm not saying it's good. Yeah, but it's it's a thing to see. It certainly is a. It's moving, and it, and you can see it. I didn't say it was moving. Oh, it mo- the the people move. Yeah, yeah. There's actually there's moving. movement in it. <laughs> yeah, it's、that's、not a, like a still. No, that's all I meant. Which is always more fun, isn't it? Yeah. Boy, that sounds amazing. Now, speaking of great music, here's a new exciting young band on the scene, and they're all young ladies. Is that right? All of them, or is there some just yeah, some of them are young ladies, and you know, it's like a scene, and they're called. Ting Tings, crazy, and this is called Great DJ. There you go. That's Ting Tings with Great DJs,、uh, Great DJ. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Time now for the news, read by Chris and Andre. Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. So、uh, is he insane in the membrane or in the brain? Which is it? Is he insane in both the membrane and the brain? Well, the brain has membrane, doesn't it? Oh, does it? So they're one in the same things. I would say membrane is a subsection of of the brain. Therefore, he's just going deeper into the subject. So it's he's not... saying, in a broad context, I'm insane in the brain,、mm. but looking deeply within the brain, I'm also insane. In the membranes of that brain, on a macro level, on a macro level. So、yeah. he's not talking about just a mucous membrane in his、Maybe、mouth. Maybe he is. Or, right. Maybe he's just got mad snot. Just the yeah. Line. Maybe he's、Nothing. one of those awful, awful people that does big spits on the pavement. A giant oysters. Someone spat on my car window that <sighs> day. It was revolting. On your car window? Yeah. Not I, while you were、I、in the car. I sat in the car, looked to my right, expecting to see a beautiful street scene.、It、was like a huge <laughs> translucent squid had attached itself. To you my were in、face. the car? No, not while I was in the car. It was just there. Oh, I see. I didn't see them do it. That would have been. If I could find that person, I'd bend them over my knee and give them a good spanking. <laughs> good Roger. Yeah. <laughs> well, steady on, Adam Buxton. <laughs> Sorry. I would certainly not do that. That's always why I think. <gasps> revolting. Was... Sorry, that is revolting. Get out of the BBC. Apologies. Now it's text the nation time. Of course, it's the nation's favourite feature. Yeah, th-、uh, this week we're asking you to send in your either invented or reliable after Din Din's games.、Mm. Yeah, and I'm、me? excited about this because this is a this is the kind of text the nation that we can actually educate people with. Yeah, plus it's a practical thing. We can apply this knowledge. Yeah, you and I are pro games anyway. We love a good game, you know. Yeah, are you going to be in a situation this weekend where you might be able to play some games? No, no, I might be. Might you? Yeah, I'm having a little sociable weekend.、Uh, well, you can em- employ one of these then. Yeah.、Um, here we go. Are you ready? Go on then. All right. Hello, chaps. This is from Neil in Cheltenham. We used to play the rope game on the way home from pubs when we were really too young to get in 
into the pubs, we'd stand on opposite sides of the road, playing tug of wars with an imaginary piece of rope, and see if we could stop cars in their tracks. As they would slow down and go past, we'd make out that we were being dragged behind. Right. Oh, those halcyon days! That's a good game. Is that a game? That's it, kind of a game, isn't it? It doesn't have a winner or a loser.、Mm. It might be dangerous. If you play it too convincingly, it's dangerous, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose so. Because someone could slow down, someone could pile right into the back of the car that slowed down. Yeah, that could be dangerous, but it's still quite sounds Carnage. quite fun. Carnage. Okay, here's one from Claire in London. Best game: Box Factor. Take one empty cereal box, stand it on the floor. Take turns to pick it up with your mouth. Your knees and hands can't touch the floor. When all is done, tear off one inch of box and repeat until the box has vanished. Jude is nodding. So what? What is that fun? So you just make the box <laughs> smaller and smaller, and you can only pick it up with your teeth. Is that right?、Yeah. And、oh. some people can do it, and some people can't do it. Wasn't? Isn't there a variation on that where you are allowed to use your?、Uh, Elbows or something, or your knees? No, I'm insane. Here's that one that I shouldn't read out. There's the one where you pass the orange, and you have to do it just with your chin. You know what I mean? You, yes. You, you clamp the orange between your chin and your chest.、That's、for children, though, isn't it?、Uh, it's fun if you're a grown-up person、Is、as、it? well, because you get a little bit of titillating, you know, contact there. Oh, I see. It's nice. Yeah. It's like pass the ice cube, but not quite so intimate. Right. You know. Okay. What, what have you got there?、Uh, a text. Go on, then, <laughs> dear Adam and Joe. Here's one that I don't think we should encourage. Take a cigarette paper,、mm. stick it to your nose, set light to it, then blow it out. Pass it on to <laughs> next person in the group. This is a game of skill and daring. Who will manage to light the smallest bit of cigarette paper without burning their eyebrows off? Well, that's dangerous. Now we should not encourage that. That's dangerous. Plus, didn't you hear in the news they're going to have warnings on the cigarette papers now? It's true, probably because of that game. Exactly. Here's another one. This is from Sarah in Godalming. After a sufficient amount of drinking, we used to recreate the gladiator wall game along a hallway or narrow path, and use household appliances such as a Hoover, ironing board, chair, or large bin to use to block the person from getting through the wall of people. It off.、Uh, so what? What is that game? I, I think that's a game. That They're、bit. bringing Gladiator back, so we'll be reminded. But I think it's it's sort of a lots of people in a row, and you have to try and run through、oh. them. Oh. You mean、is、that, that TV、thing? show? I was thinking there yeah, was like a no, scene the in the film, the no, Ridley Scott no, film. No, that that would involve going to a zoo and jumping into the tiger enclosure with、yeah. a dustbin lid. Was, yeah, a very bad idea. None of the games they play in the Ridley Scott film seem that much fun for after dinner. No,、uh, we've had lots more in, but I haven't printed them out yet. So we'll get to them in a second. But keep them coming in, please. We appreciate all your texts and emails as ever. And now it's time for this new Nick. Cave song with the bad seeds. This is a good one. Dig Lazarus. Dig. That's that's kind of like a song poem, isn't it? He's he's got there. It's when you know you got a groove going and you think, well, it's a good groove, but I don't know what to do with the groove. So I'll do a sort of song poem on on top. It's not exactly rapping. It's just kind of reading out a little short story, a bit like Part Life by Blur. That's another. Similar one in the genre. Anyway, that was Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds with, with、uh, Bad Seeds with Dig Lazarus Dig. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. We're in the midst of Text the Nation, ladies and gentlemen. We're asking you to get in touch with us and suggest games that we can add to our games arsenal, particularly if they're appropriate for kind of、uh, you know after dinner situations. They can be silly as well. I, I like to read invented games. Right. Yeah. It's hard inventing games, man. Have you ever invented a game?、Uh, I tried to make some board games when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. I'd need to think a bit harder to try, to try and remember them. I think everyone tries to make a board game, don't they?、Right. At some stage in their life. And then later, I graduated onto trying to make a vending machine. <laughs> wow! I was obsessed with vending. Everyone machines. Everyone dreams of making a vending yeah, machine. Yeah, didn't go so well. How did you? Then I tried. To, I actually tried to make a video game. Yeah. <laughs> Just out of cardboard. Do you、idea. remember that time when video games weren't? You didn't plug them into the telly, but it would just be a sort of scrolling piece of、uh, see-through plastic with lights behind it and、mm. a racing car, sort of on a stick. Do you remember that? Technically, that's not a video game. No, but but there was a time before,、yes. you know, before. So I tried to make one of those. That's how did it go? It didn't go very well. Not that well. No. That's a shame, man. You should apply yourself. I should try again. Next time you get、I? a little time on your hands,、It'd、be a bit retrograde. No, come on, that's time well spent. Hey,、uh, anyway, none of those games could be any worse than the Scooby Doo game that I got the other day for my children. Oh my lordy! It's big board game, and you get like a, a wind up、uh, or a, a electric、uh, ghost. 
Mm-hmm. And sounds you, good so far. So you've got like a long, wibbly-wobbly track that goes around the board. Another electric ghosts. And then you, so you, uh, it's basically like snakes and ladders you're playing, mm-hmm. right? You're going around the wibbly-wobbly track. And then you start the electric ghost going oh. uh, halfway around the track. And you've got to outrun the ghost. If he catches you, then you're you're dead. But the, the, it's fraught with all kinds of problems because the ghost gets stuck and he falls over and it's rubbish. Sounds rubbish. Do you want to hear some more uh, games that have been sent in by listeners? Yeah, good games. This is from Samantha. My brother and I used to play a game called Floppy Bodies. When we were going on a trip in the car, we had to pretend we had no bones in our bodies so that every time the car went round a corner, we flopped all over the place, landing on the floor, each other, the front seats, wherever. It was brilliant <laughs> that sounds dangerous as well samantha but good as well floppy bodies you wouldn't want to play it while you're actually driving well it would be hard not to because the game you know hinges on the car going around corners and stuff yeah i know hinges but around the motion fine for the passengers the i'm saying not for the actual person driving i think the tip is to play it in the back seat right not if you're uh, in the passenger in seat control of the actual here's car. another good one uh, a lady called carmel in horsham an old favorite of ours was cracker whacker <laughs> Uh, You all had to tape cream crackers to your head, which was a bit of a challenge and took some work on techniques. Then you would bash each other with sticks of celery, the (laughs) winner destroying all the other people's cream crackers. That's nice. It's healthy, too. Pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, it's good, nutritious. Nice nice bit to be hit in the face with a piece of celery. Then you can have the celery after. All the crumbs cascading everywhere. (laughs) In your hair. Giggling. I'd do it nude. (laughs) I don't know why. It just seems like something nudists might do. There's very few games that aren't improved by... Be- by being naked. By being nude. By being nude. Yeah. Uh, here's another one from David and Ealing. Everyone leans back. Uh, so this is unlike the cracker one. You don't stick these to your face. He's saying you lean back and you balance an after eight mint on your forehead. Mm-hmm. It's good. You know, dinner parties, after eight mints. He's Delicious. thinking. He's really thinking about yeah. all the details. You have to eat the sweet without touching it with your hands, which basically entails scrunching your face up and gurning to encourage it to slip towards your mouth, smearing chocolate all down your face as it goes. Ugh. The first person to eat their after eight wins, but really, everyone's a winner. That's a good. That is that is a good, isn't that it? That is a good. That is a good. That's a good. That's I can imagine myself playing that on my own. You know what? You could you could even use it as an advert. Have yeah. like a nauseating group of twenty uh, somethings in Shoreditch sat around playing that. Like, didn't they have what was? It? Oh yeah, it was the it was the Pringles or the um, one of those wonky shaped crisps. You know, they had an advert that was all about them sort of playing games based on the chips. Did I imagine this? Come on. Well, I wasn't listening. No. Say it again. Uh, there was an advert with with um, annoying young people playing games with crisps. You know, like... Oh, possibly a Pringles one, maybe. or Pringles, maybe, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Possibly. But that's a good game. I the, like that kind of the, thing. The mint one. The, the after eight The one. after I'd eight say one. that's the best we've had so far. That's a nice game. Yeah, I'm going to keep uh, keep the emails coming in, please, listeners. Adam and Joe. Six music at bbc.co.uk or what is it? Six four zero four six. We're looking for the best game you've either made up or played, uh, you know, and, and had a good time with. Now, far off my uh, next choice right now, Jude, because this is a long one, listeners. I've I've picked out a few epics for you today, folks. Before we heard Supergrass with Far Away, this is my second epic of the day, so that's why I'm kind of speaking over the top of it. Otherwise, it'll go on much too long. But this is Boards of Canada with a track called Happy Cycling, which I think is an extra track on their seminal uh, 1998 LP, uh, Music Has the Right to Children. Was it 98 or 99? I think it was... Just uh, admit you don't know. 98. It's cleaner for everybody. It was 98. And it's an amazing track, and it unfolds uh, beautifully slowly, and then it kind of picks up this rhythm gets going and then and then there's a, there's a sort of wonderful release towards the end the last couple of minutes it sort of blossoms into this whole other thing it's lovely so uh, enjoy it's a lovely relaxing track for you happy cycling by boards of canada that's boards of canada with happy cycling that's a little epic that uh, i reckon you can handle hearing over and over you know because some epics they're great on the first listen, your Bohemian Rhapsodies, your Free Birds, you know, your Stairway to Heavens. Great songs, not taking anything away from them, but it's a mistake to put them on a compilation. That's all I'm saying. However, not a mistake to stick a little bit of Happy Cycling by Boards of Canada on there. That's what I reckon anyway. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. That's the animals with We Gotta Get Out of This Place. Now it's time for the nation's favourite feature... 
Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. Surely only a matter of time before we get some kind of award for thinking up a feature like this, don't you reckon? I know. It, it, we're long overdue an award. We only ever got one. Yeah. And it was uh, rigged as well, I think, wasn't it? It was rigged. All awards are rigged. Yeah. It's I all wish, right. Can't they be rigged in our favour? Uh, no. Oh, okay. No, they can't. Fair enough. We are asking you listeners to send in your favourite games that you like playing, you know? Like, mainly sort of grown-up games, but doesn't matter if they're a little ridiculous as well yeah um i had a really good one printed out but i've lost it but anyway here are some more i'll build up to it oh no there it is there it is we'll build up to that one uh here's one from christian spelt with a k me and my sister used to play a game where one of us would pretend to be a stone and the other one would fall over it mm -hmm. <laughs> and my friend ashley used to uh and my friend ashley used to play seats so wait 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 yeah that was it? That was the game? <laughs> well, these are childhood games. We're building up to it. It gets a bit better stroke okay. worse. My <laughs> friend Ashley used to play seats where her and her sister used to pretend to be different kinds of seats and sit on each other. I remember that. Yeah, I played that <laughs> game too. That's a fun game. I've never played that game. What would you be? Like a posturepedic stool? Well, I don't think it's so important. Uh... What? How many different types of chair can there be? Well, you can be a big comfy armchair if you hold up your arms and uh, sort Is of that spread like a out sexy your legs game? a little bit. Not really. Eh? You can make it a sexy game, obviously. That's why I said before, all of these games can be made sexy very easily. I might be with a seat the removal with a... of clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I might be a seat with an uncomfortable nub. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I like th what no. Anyway, carry That's on. That's not really a game, is it? But I like the <laughs> idea of people being seats. That's very odd. Uh, Richard Harrison uh, s sends in... Well, what was that noise? It sounded like a howling dog. Uh, he says, competition jigsaw. You and your opponent sit on opposite sides of the table, laying out all the jigsaw pieces of a jigsaw on the table. When the game starts, you race to put the pieces together. You can't steal pieces. The winner is the person who's made most of the jigsaw uh, by the time you reach stalemate. Speed jigsaw. Yeah. Like it. Well, a again, a lot of games can be improved if you just play a speed version. That's right. We used to play Speed Connect 4, Connect didn't 4, we? Yeah. That's a good game, man. I claim to be able to beat anybody in the world at Connect 4. At Connect 4. Yeah. I don't boast many things in my life. Can you do I it online? Think, I bet you can, can't you? Uh, yeah, you can, but you don't want to play against a computer. No, you but can't you can't psych them but you out. Could, in surely the ways you could play. That I use. <laughs> you could play other people though. Surely online. I bet you could. Like, could you? Yeah. I don't think it's respected really as a game. To I'm have trying that to wheedle out of it now. No, but I, I throw down the gauntlet. If anybody out there thinks they can beat me at Connect Four, we come to the studio. Email us. I'll take you on. That, that's I'll a good challenge. You. We can do. We can do I'll this. We, this is. Uh, the and kind if of I thing... don't beat you in the first game, <laughs> I'll beat you in best of three. <laughs> okay. You can't qualify like that. Come on. I just did. We should do that, man. And then we could film it and make a little podcast out of it. That's okay. what podcasts will make. If made you reckon for. you're good at that kind of lane, Connect crap. Four. <laughs> challenge yeah. Cornish. Challenge Cornish. Speed Connect Four. I'm telling you, listeners, it's really good fun. And there, and basically, you have to do. I'm it. not playing speed though. You have to. No, I'm not saying you have to. But if you do play Speed Connect Four, the rule is you you, you have to play immediately, like as soon right. as the other person. There's no thinking time. Yeah. You know? As soon as their chip hits the hits the tray. Exactly. You've got to thrust your one not in the there. the tray. The the thing. The oh, little barrier. At the okay. Bottom. Here's another one. Yeah. This is from uh, Professor Wigton. Not sure that's uh, a real name. Uh, and this is an irresponsible person. game. A great game for the end of a restaurant meal is food ping. All leftovers are put on one plate. Then you use your fork to ping a small amount over your shoulder. Points are awarded depending on who or what you hit. And you're out if someone you're out if someone realizes it was you. I've only ever been thrown out of a restaurant once for this game because a noob to the group accidentally pinged mashed potato into a waiter's face. No, you can't play that kind of thing at a restaurant. But since we'd finished the meal, it was basically a saving of over a hundred pounds. Yeah. Because they didn't have to pay, they were just chucked out. That's quite good. <laughs> and it, where's my favourite one? My favourite one is, uh, yeah, beat the security light. Hi guys, just thought of another game we used to play at a friend's house after dinner parties. They had a long garden. We used to take it in turns to try and get from one end of the garden to the other without setting off the security light. That's from Chris Prince. Chris, I did a very similar thing when we rented a place in Greece. Mm -hmm. It had a staircase and it had security lights on the stairs. Mm -hmm. And pretty much the first entire two nights we spent stealthily creeping amazingly slowly up the stairs to see who could get the highest without activating the security light. Right. It's if, brilliant. You feel you, like you're in Mission Impossible. Exactly. Because if you move slowly enough, 
Right. You won't activate the light. You're like Catherine Zeta-Jones in Entrapment. Exactly. But if you slip or make a sudden movement, the light goes off. I've never had more fun in my life. Oh, I don't think. I can imagine. That's a brilliant one. That sounds very good. Keep them coming in. Now, here's some music from someone I saw on Jonathan Ross's program last night, and I wasn't really aware of Duffy before, were you? Uh, we've played Duffy on this show before many times, so yes, I was. I didn't realise she was so young. What is she, like, 19 or 20 or something? Very young indeed. Uh, but she's got a very good voice. This is called Mercy uh, by Duffy. There you go, that's Duffy with Mercy. That's what it's all about, isn't it? It's all a 60s sort of chanteurs thing, isn't it? Got to be, like, all like that. That is what's going down, apparently. Like Adele and uh, Winehouse and uh, a little bit of Duffy there. Mm -hmm. It's all the stuff, in it. It's good. It's good. I like it. Yeah, do you enjoy that one? Well, I like uh, I like a person who can sing. You can really Someone sing. Someone who can hold a note. I like people who can't sing. Do you? I genuinely do. Yeah, yeah. I know Some what of you my mean. favorite singers are people that just muddle through who've got crappy voices. Well, there's a strange approach to singing, isn't there, in the world because of all this uh, X Factor business where being able to hit a note amazingly accurately then warble is seen as the the greatest type of singing, but mm. often great singers are, are slightly off. Yeah. Aren't they? Or there's something in 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 their voice a bit wrong or rough or you know, very that they Bend the bend the notes very very slightly. Well, you have to perform a little bit more. Like you have to emote in more unusual ways. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm like too tired. If you've got uh, not the best voice in the world, you have to make up for it in other ways. Yeah. By it's true. Putting some weird inflections in there. So the Marky e. Smiths of the world, who aren't really crooners, they've got something the actual timbre and the yeah. quality of their voice. Mm, it's true. In itself, is nice. Yeah, you turn a kind of a disability into an asset. <laughs> like we yeah. were talking about the other the other week. Uh, but talking of having an amazing voice, uh, the, 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 the greatest male soul voice of all time is widely considered to be Marvin Gaye. Uh, uh you know that guy? Yeah, I thought you were gonna say, um, Lamar. Lamar. No, I wasn't gonna say Lamar. Oh, okay. Um, but Marvin Gaye's seminal 1978 album, Hear My Dear, has just been, uh, re-released. Again? Uh, again. Um, yeah, it's been remixed and not remixed, but all, all remastered. And it's also got a second CD where they've got hold of the original tracks, the original 8, 16, whatever he recorded it on. Yeah. And they've got guest producers uh, like Questlove and Prince Paul to kind of remix the original uh, tracks, not adding anything new, but just resetting all the volumes and things. And there's oh, really? some pretty, pretty interesting results. I'm never quite sure about those kinds of, uh, of albums. You've probably got some of your favorite bands who, like the Beach Boys, have they done that kind of thing with the Beach Boys in the past? The Beatles, I'm sure, I'm sure they must have done. And the results are never as good as the original. They all, they always make you think, God, the original mix of that was absolutely sublime. Yeah. But sometimes they, you know, you can pick up really uh, interesting little details that you didn't notice the first time round. Anyway, here my dear is, uh, you know, Marvin Gaye's most, uh, interesting and kind of um, nakedly emotional album. He wrote it as a settlement in his divorce. He did. Didn't he? he he married uh, Barry Gordy's daughter Anna Gordy yeah. when he was twenty and she was thirty-seven. Uh, he then regretted it. They divorced. He met a much younger girl, like a seventeen-year-old girl. Uh, they divorced, and in settlement, instead of paying her money, he recorded this album, uh, which is a, a, a sort of brutally honest document of their divorce proceedings. Yeah. Uh, and also, you know, what it's like to fall out of love with someone. And it's amazing. It's the kind of album you can listen to uh, with an awareness of what actually happened in his life. And it's sort of like the greatest soul musical never staged kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is a track from it. This is one of the more upbeat tracks. This is not a remixed version. No, no, this is the original version, but it's it's been remastered. So it's all sounding all sparkly and digital. This is an upbeat track from here, my dear. Uh, a kind of a track about him meeting this new 17 year old girl. Uh, and this is called Falling in Love Again. There we go, Marvin Gaye with Falling in Love Again from here, my dear, that's just been reissued. My two favourite things about that track, the alto saxophone. Mm -hmm. Not a big fan of saxophones, but that's got the most lovely saxophone sound uh, of all time in yeah. my CD collection it's anyway. It's nice and restrained. Second favourite thing is that all through it, he's going poop 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 be doo doo poop poop doo be doo doo uh, exposing his doo-wop roots there. And his love of... Poo -poo. No, Adam. No. Why do you have to bring everything into the lavatory? I don't know, just because... You love the lavatory. I love it there. It's great. I've got a nice one. It's, uh, you know, who doesn't love the lavatory? Come on. Come on. Hey, do you like uh, uh, these two things? Do you like trails? I love trails. Do you like sport? 
Uh, it would take a really snazzily produced trail to make me interested in sport. Let's see how this one goes then. There you go. How do you feel about that? See, the one, the one thing I didn't mention, of course, was relief. That was the missing part of the puzzle. Yeah, that's not sport. That's uh, helping people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's different. Helping people via sport. That's yeah. the acceptable form of sport. Mm -hmm. Now, what would you do in this situation that I was in earlier this week, Joe Cornish? Uh, I was walking along Brixton Road, and I saw a mother pushing a pram with her teenage daughter uh, tagging along beside her. She's got a little toddler in the pram. The teenage daughter finishes a carton of juice, right? And then, in full view of her ma, lobs it over the shoulder, over her shoulder, and it lands on the pavement there. And then she just walks on, okay? And it really made me feel very depressed. And what's more, there was a bin about two feet away from this girl. Was she well. trying to get it in the bin? No. No, there was no question. In fact, she did it with a real flourish. Did the mother see this? The mother saw it, yeah. Didn't care. Didn't bat an eyelid. No. What did you do? Absolutely nothing. Wow, you're brave. I'm a real <laughs> kind of genius man, aren't I? And it, it made me feel sick because not only was it, uh, it was so depressing just to see her doing that, you know, but it was obviously very depressing that I chickened out of doing anything. I just couldn't get it together because the the fact that it was her mum complicated it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I didn't feel as if I wanted to cause embarrassment to her mum. Don't going you up, tell me how to bring up my child. Exactly. That would None of your business. That would have been what I would stab, have got. Stab, bang, stab. <laughs> the baby could have been carrying a knife. I could have got one in the knees there. But, um, no, but you know what I'm saying? Would you, what would you have done? Because the, the, the thing to have done, obviously, would have been to go up to the daughter and not be aggressive about it, but just yeah. pick up the cart and say, you know, there's a bin there. Someone's My usual to... tactic is, excuse me, you drop this. Right. Yeah. And hand it to them. And hand it to them. How does that go down usually? Usually with fight. A little bit of a fight. Yeah. Scuffle. Scuffle. I don't believe you actually do that to anyone who looked in any way scary, though, would you? You know, I feel sorry for people who do that because, you know, their attitude to litter is probably permeates their entire attitude to life. Yeah. And they'll struggle. Right. You know, if they, if they, you've got to look after the details in the world. That's true. Pay attention to the little things and, and the, the big things take care of themselves, care of you themselves. know? So her punishment will be to, you know, to live life like a piece of trash. Right. She'll be treated like a piece of trash. Yeah, but what if she's like 50 Cent and it all just works out for her and she ends he up living his, in a giant he puts mansion? puts stuff in the bin. Does he? He's very conscientious, yeah. I bet you he does as well. He does. I'm sure he does. That's rule he one. He keeps the hood clean. I felt like such a loser walking away from that. I didn't even pick it up. I didn't even well, go and pick it up. But so I'm, I'm worse than she is. Her. I'm worse. You're worse. I'm worse. I hate you. Thank you. You're scum. I am scum. Here's some Niles Barkley for you. That's exhausting. I'm exhausted. That was run by Niles Barkley. Gnarls. Is that new Gnarls? Yes. New Gnarls. They were an outfit that I thought would probably peter. I have to be honest with you. I thought after a massive hit like that, you got to do some petering because you would have uh, absolutely shot your bolt with crazy. Skin. Skin. Skins? Skins. Oh, the youth drama. I'm just keeping this program hip. Skins. Okay, just by saying skins. Just by saying skins. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna, I'm working on an idea for a program. It's called, uh, it's either go gonna be called Junk. <laughs> uh, because that refers to drugs and exactly. also people's genitals. Yeah. Yeah. Does it? it? All <laughs> kids. That's what skins, you know, skins, your skin, skins, roller skin. Yeah. That's all the kids care about, sex and drugs. Skin heads. So junk. Uh, I might just do a show called called Bits. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's already a show, wasn't it? Like a computer show. It was a computer show. Um, have you noticed Skins is sponsored by the British School of Motoring? I can't say the word British. Have you noticed that? Uh, yeah, uh, no, I never noticed that. It's not, it's not really the sexy cherry on the sexy cake, is it? You know, you spend millions of pounds on an advertising campaign to make everyone look sexy and then... Sponsored by the British School of Motoring. Plus the fact that they've got irresponsible motoring it's in that program we'll as well. We'll talk about that further in a second, but first here's the news read by... Adam, quickly. A newsman. That's Ben Folds with The Five? I think so, yeah. Ben Folds Five with Rock in the Suburbs. is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Right now it's time for... Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. Just gonna wrap this mother up right now, real quick for you. Listeners. Yeah. Thanks a lot, everyone. Yeah, yeah, what is yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. sent in emails and texts and all that? You know, some of them are very long and com com complicated. Complicated. And it's, a, it's, long well, long words. it's often yeah. you know tricky to read them and uh, yeah. you know get sleepy midway through. That's right. So here's some of the simpler ones. Here's a good one that uh, is a good one. You know, that's sort of a good one. I love it when that happens. Yeah, they're good. Those good ones. 
Uh, it's from Stephen Cowie. Uh, he says, in our old student house, we used to play a game. We never came up with a name for it, where we had to get from one part of the house to another or around a whole room without touching the floor at all. Mm, I remember playing that oh, game. Yeah, it's a brilliant game. It's best played when you're little. Yeah. Because then you don't break things, but can also be played when you're large. It's not such a good after dinner or if game. You're a little angry, <laughs> I would say. I don't know, man. You reckon? Yeah, I think, you know, get crazy. Mm. Break the rules. Maybe I will. This would generally involve jumping from one piece of furniture to the next, or some shimmying along corridors with your back pressed against one wall and your feet against the opposite wall. Yes. Wear a pair of clean socks for this. Absolutely. Uh, there's perhaps no better way of making you feel like your favourite action movie star than a daring leap of faith from the kitchen table onto the side of the fridge. There's also no other, uh, no better way for smacking your forehead really dangerous, badly very on the dangerous. corner of the Breaking cabinets. a piece of antique furniture. Yeah. These are just the caveats. It's important to do caveats when you work at the castle. Exactly. Um, got to be legally covered. Here's another one from Guido and Genevieve. I, wow. That's a good couple of names though, isn't it? Yeah. Do you think they're boyfriend and girlfriend? I hope so. They're probably attracted to each other because of their names, I would have thought. If Why? Because called... they both begin with a G. Well, Guido, if you're called Guido or if you're called Genevieve, you don't, you're not going to want to go out with someone called Pete or Tammy, <laughs> are you? <laughs> you're right. Um, they suggest uh, quite a good game, which is... Uh, where does it have a name? Let's have a look. You've got to choose between two very unpleasant things. Mm. That's a good game, isn't it? Like, would you rather... The illustrations they they give for this are rather lavatorial, so I won't read them out. But it's usually a choice between two. Like, would you rather die of heat or cold? Right. It's yeah. a classic one. You can debate that for hours. Yeah. Would you rather have Amy Winehouse living in your cellar? Yeah. And coming into your house at night and having parties, or Pete Doherty living in your attic? And coming in your house at night and having parties. Yeah. Well, awesome. it's a bit like the character from Extras. She's always playing that game with... Really? Uh, Ricky, yeah. Oh, I haven't seen that show. <laughs> uh, here's another one. It's good. Um, from Bobster Brown. Uh, he says his family have invented a game they play at Christmas called Pass the Sprout. After dinner, uh, someone gets a sprout. You pass it round. It's like a really crappy version of Pass the Parcel. You remove a leaf when it's passed to you. <laughs> That's nature's gift, isn't it? That's the end. But what do you get in the middle? Just a really nutritious snack. Uh, you get mm -hmm. a, um, the taste slightly of metal, like a little nut in there. Mm -hmm. You Here's... don't even get a nut, do you, with the sprout? Here's a good one to be played if you work in a pub. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called uh, Blackboard Caricature Touch Relay from Pete Wynn. Uh, it can be played by three or more bar staff. On the blackboard behind the bar, I draw a caricature of someone in the bar, a punter, a customer. The other staff must guess who that person is. Then they make their way into the uh, public area of the bar and attempt to touch that person without them realising. Mm. If they get caught, they have to skulk off embarrassed and come up with an excuse. If they get the right person, they get to pull, choose the next person. That's a nice little variation on a game that we used to play, of course, which is called the touching game. The touching game. How did that go? Well, we used to just go out and uh, you'd point to someone in the street and say, you've got, to, filthy. You've got to touch them. So then you would go over and, and you'd just try and make physical contact with them without, without them, them noticing. noticing yeah. That can be fun. It is a good fun touch game. Touch them lightly on the back of the coat. Yeah. But if you put too much pressure, you're in trouble. And then we had a friend, our friend Zach always used to be much more daring than than everybody else and he would sort of go up and touch them on the front of uh, you know like on their front rather than the obvious thing is to go and touch their back or whatever but he would go up and just touch their arm or their face sometimes it was frightening <laughs> watching him do it because <laughs> you just thought oh no no dude, that's gonna kick off he's cool <laughs> um and here's finally one that's quite striking it's an anon no it's from helen she says that her family make up games mm -hmm. Uh, and they're embarrassing and she doesn't really like playing them and she's saying the worst one i'm paraphrasing here is called spoons it's a variation on blind man's buff only with spoons uh she's forced to play it every christmas when she was little everyone sits in a big embarrassing circle one person gets blindfolded and has to feel people to guess who they are but using only the back of two large spoons how could that possibly work? You've got well, no... she, her next sentence is absolutely impossible. Of Full course, stop. It's impossible. I just like the thought of Helen's family sitting around, one of them blindfolded, and and someone with a couple of spoons. <laughs> it's like some appalling, like biblical parable or something. Yeah, or there's a... nothing appalling about biblical parables. I don't know why I used that word. No. Well, you didn't imply that there was. Jesus is ace. You were just talking about one of the In appalling ones. Yeah, that's true.
<laughs> so that's it for text the nation thanks very much to everybody who uh texted in sorry i didn't get my head around some of the more uh you know cerebral longer ones but adam and i will be taking them off and 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 uh, publishing them in a book and making lots of money <laughs> jesus is ace jesus is ace what do you think is going to happen to you if someone um, feels that hey, you've implied that knows, you might not man, be ace but if all that stuff's true we could be in trouble he would forgive you would he then? as bill hicks points out yeah um now here's a punk with uh no no vampire weekend what is my problem with uh a punk that's vampire weekend with a punk is the that latest thing is that riding high in the charts gotta be is it's he... riding high in the cool charts in the sorry cool to charts. interrupt but no, that's absolutely. important fact gotta keep the cool chart yeah. news uh, the latest thing be into in. them now because in a couple of weeks they'll be yesterday you reckon yeah they might keep it on the boil though like the monkeys yeah. the arctic monkeys you never know well it's important to hedge your bets uh, i reckon they've got the staying power man um now what was i uh what was i gonna say not being serious by the way what about you know the Vamp vampire weekend two weeks yeah no no it's just you were being quite serious there i know they're in it for the long haul man yeah um so you, you're shuffling your papers like a newsreader that's because it's almost the end of our bulletin listeners it's nice you know? to shuffle papers it is nice it makes you feel grown up doesn't it do you uh you, ne you never watch never mind the buzzcocks do you um no 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 you're missing out man really it's really funny it's really properly funny mm. like uh maybe i'm just getting older i don't know and i'm growing into these things but harry hill's tv burp and never mind the buzzcocks that's like proper belly laugh city man it's really amazing i'd sort of forgotten what it was like to watch a comedy show and really enjoy it but those uh shows are like pure unadulterated pleasure simon amstel's on top of his game and it's always a good show but jamelia was on last week <sighs> you've got a bit of a thing for her i've forgotten that i had one she's sexy and she's so impossibly she's got the legs <sighs> and this but she seems body nice balance as on well arms coming out the sides oh, the and the head, head ball area ball. circular <laughs> thing on the balanced on the top all the bits in the it's right got place features on it good features uh, nice she's got extras brilliant extras bottom i just love her and she seems like a nice person as well and um obviously talented although mm. i don't really know much about her music she's good though right uh what, what was her big hit i don't, don't, uh, don't, don't know come on we must know six music oh dear none of us have got a clue <laughs> well, you needn't have brought it up well i was just talking about it but uh, i just wanted to get it off my chest because it, it opened up a little can of worms in the house the the old argument about who you'd be allowed to snog you know mm. if the situation arose that you ever got the chance to have a little jamelia snog would you be allowed to is the question i asked my wife and she, she said she got angry about it and you just think, well, this is a hypothetical discussion. It's very unlikely that I'm ever, ever going to get the chance to have a snog with Jamelia. Why get upset about it? But it didn't help turn into a little aggressive conversation. I said, you're allowed to snog someone in the hypothetical world. Who would you like? You know, and you know, you're a more attractive person than I am. There's every chance that you might actually get to do it. And I'm, I'm going to be cool with it. She didn't give me anything. She said, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. And that was it well she's a better person than you no come on you're a rancid disgusting unfaithful mentally pig <laughs> man <laughs> just in my brainium she's, she's a lovely loyal lady i know but you're i disgusting i don't believe it ruling over women a Shh. third of your age women are women are just they they're dishonest i think you know because i do not believe that she is not doing some mental drooling there and she's what your wife over jamelia no not over jamelia that's the way to square the circle to tring the triangle she likes the ruffians get jamelia and the wife like when we're watching cop dramas she always likes to the, uh... go to the theater <laughs> to see the war horse which has some fantastic puppetry in it there you go well done got out of that brilliantly but you know what i mean like when she's watching sort of cop dramas and stuff she always likes the ruffians on there i'm sure she'd snog one of those ruffians anyway that's uh <laughs> Jam jamelia knew and, I, I, and i'd be fine with it that's what i'm saying she wanted to snog her up in that's fine anyway um now here's the last of my uh epic choices for you listeners hey this one is not particularly long this musical choice but uh, i mean it's on the long side but it's good man it's a roxy music track and it's from siren uh which has got it's a sort of weird album siren i think is it the one with jerry hall lying on the beach on the front I think it might be. Anyway, like all Roxy Music's albums, they've uh, there's brilliant tracks on there, and this is one of the best, in my opinion. This is called End of the Line. That's great, that little coda at the end there, the piano bit. That's Excuse. Roxy Music with End of the Line, 
uh sounding a little bit like dexy's midnight runners there almost you know with the with the fiddles in the middle sex the drugs, middle fiddles girls boys i don't care skins skins junk uh well man that's a good idea for a show you should get it off the ground thanks a lot mate junk that's excellent that's it for us this week folks thank you so much for listening listen i've got some sad news for you we're, we're away next weekend but uh don't worry because alan carr is stepping in tv's alan carr tv's alan carr which i'm off of celebrity ding dong i find that quite flattering that he would yeah, step in for he's us. been filling in for the for the merchant mm. hasn't he yeah. yeah and he's he's very good apparently and he'll be here at the same time next week uh we're taking a week off doing things that we'll tell you about the following week when we'll be back again so it means there won't be any podcasts well there, there might be we're, we're sort of sorting it out listen out for one we we were thinking of maybe trying to um fix up the christmas show that we did because that was a good show yeah and maybe I'm do that as a, yeah but the rules are very strict the here rules the, are strict castle so we don't know whether we'll be allowed no so we'll have to figure that out but right now we're going off to record the intros for our for this weekend's podcast of course keep downloading those podcasts folks thank you very much for having done so so far and uh thanks for listening today and texting and emailing and all that thought good stuff yeah, yeah thanks a lot have a great weekend and stay tuned right now for liz kershaw <laughs>